Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark, where I'm having a very sneaky early morning video in between a ton of training, which is why I've been so quiet recently, because I'm just spending my life teaching people the joys of Spark and Delta and Lake Houses and all of that good stuff. But there's new things we need to talk about. So lineage is a big, big feature that loads of people have been trying to chase down. We've seen lots of different governance products trying to say, hey, I can do lineage, but none of them are very good at Spark usually. So with Unity Catalog talking about its own lineage functions, it made sense to get excited. But it's been in private preview for so long, we couldn't really test it out. We couldn't really get our grips onto it. But glad to say, as of this month, it is now in public preview. So you used to, back in the day, have to ask permission to get hold of lineage and have it enabled. But now that Unity Catalog is GA, anyone and everyone who's using Databricks can now go and use Unity Catalog and everyone can now turn on Lineage and give it a go. So I thought I'd do a really quick video. There's not a lot to it currently. Basically, it's turn it on and have a look at the Lineage it tracks. Um, but we'll have a look at how it works, what it does, what it doesn't do. And yeah, get you guys started to tracking all the different downstream dependencies, all the different Lineage that goes into your own uh, data sets. And yeah, it's pretty cool. As always, if you're new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments how you get on turning on Lineage. And has it helped you find anything? Have you found out dependencies you weren't really aware of? Because you, you set it at the cluster, and then you open up and you're like, oh, those guys are using it. Oh, didn't realize. And that's the kind of insight I'm expecting to uh, hear from people as they're going through all this stuff. So let's go and have a look. Okay, first things first, we've now got this uh, new page. I'm going to step back a little bit. So it's part of the release notes for this month. So you see that this... Lineage data, we need to catalog is now public preview. Uh, and we can go and dig into the documentation. The docs are now live. You can go and use it. It works on AWS, works on uh, Azure. I don't know about GCP yet. Uh, but yeah, it's all out there, all live. A few things you need before you can start tracking lineage. So let's have a look at this. So, number one, you've got to have Unity Catalog. It's a Unity Catalog feature. Makes sense. You can't use it without Unity Catalog. That's fair. And it's got to be premium. But then all of this stuff. You need premium for anyway. Getting to the point where, you know, you just need premium. I rarely ever see anyone use standard, especially, you know, security. People like security. I don't know why. Um, okay, you've got to have data registered in Unity Catalog. Now, that's a big one. That is a big limitation currently in that lineage can't be tracked at the file level. So if you're doing lots of things and you're writing to the lake and you're telling where in the lake to write and then you're telling it where from the lake to read the data and everything is at the lake level, this is not going to work. So currently, this is just doing things at the table level, and it's tables that have been registered with Unity Catalog. Uh, there's a Spark config. We need to turn on. So we need to go and edit our cluster. We need to add that Spark config in, and then when that cluster's turned on, it'll then be tracking lineage. So it won't work for just any, any cluster. It's not a workspace setting or anything like that. You have to specifically tell the cluster you're now tracking lineage, which isn't too bad. But if you want a load of different workspaces, and you're a lot of people who are creating their own clusters on the fly. You want to make sure that's part of your policies. You want to make sure that's actually just set somewhere. Um, what's we use? You got to use data frames. It's fine. Uh, you got to have. You got to be able to. You got to have permissions to seed the table to be able to see the lineage. Yeah. Okay. That's that's fair. I get that. Uh, and you got to be able to see the objects to to see things. So yeah, yeah. Most mostly makes sense. And yeah, if we got that lineage is not captured for data written directly to files. Then other bits and pieces, streaming is only supported for most recent runtime. I mean, that's that's fine. Again, Linux should not cancel, uh, not captured if you go straight to uh, a cloud space. Fine. Lineage is computed on a 30 day rolling window. So it's not display for tables that have not been modified in the last 30 days. So it sounds like it's better just trawling the logs. It's scraping the logs of everything that goes through and then reverse engineering the lineage from that and then throwing that history away after 30 days. So imagine it's kind of just you're going to see lineage change over time if someone ran a prototype and then they never ran it again then that's going to drop off your lineage view i assume it's not been around for 30 days i've not tried it so yeah interesting to kind of get an idea of how this is all going to fit in uh, and again the other big one is it's not captured for delta live tables which makes entire sense because currently unity catalog doesn't support delta live tables or vice versa so yeah obviously lineage isn't going to work so with all of that in mind, with those caveats, with those things, we can go and try out some real simple examples. So over in Databricks, I've got a cluster turned on. 
We go and have a look at my little Unity cluster. Uh, and if we edit this cluster, uh, we go way down. Let's just get this moved down. We see in here, we've got advanced options. And that's where we have these Spark configs. So you can see in my Spark configs, I've now got this data lineage enabled is true. And I just took that directly from this blog post, directly where it's saying you need to have this uh, setting turned on. I just copied and pasted that, dumped that into my Spark config. And then when I re then restart my cluster, that then has that configuration enabled. So you need to have done that. The cluster that's running has to have that Spark config enabled. Uh, and then we'll be good. Assume you can set it at the session level. Not tried, but still. Okay. So then what we're looking for is we're going to put data into our Unity catalog. And then we're going to suck some data from it and write it somewhere else. And then we're going to summarize that data. So we're going to do a couple of hops so that we've got something to explore. So I'm really going to be quickly going to go to, you know, everyone loves adventure works. Uh, so I'm going to start and just run this little script. Now this is super basic. Uh, I'm saying here's a list of, here's a catalog, here's a schema, here's a list of tables, uh, and just go and create a catalog, create a schema, and then just read the table and write it. Not particularly efficient as doing it in serial. Whatever. Real quick example. Just get data, add a bit of metadata, add the load date, and write it down into my lake. That's fine. Nice, easy first step. Again, that's a little bit like a real basic bronze loading uh, layer, especially tagging it with the metadata. That's the nice fancy new column that gives us some really good stats. So we get that whole file path, file name, file size, file size and file modification date. Fine. Um, super useful. So that's going through and that's loading that. So we'll have a bunch of tables that are just created, uh, but there's no real lineage there. I'm not really doing anything with them. So we can go in, we can dig into a specific table. So if I go and grab my customer table, I can see I've got lineage over here. So there's no data. Makes sense. There's no tables pushing data to it because it came from a file. And there's no data that actually sucks from it because I've not run anything else yet. But what I can see is notebooks. So even without all the good lineage stuff and kind of where it is in our dependency diagram, I can still see actually where did that run? Which notebook did that come from? Now, I've not plugged it into a database job. I've not plugged it into a dashboard, so I won't see anything there either. But just grabbing the notebooks is a useful start. That's just bit. There we go. Okay, good. All right, so it's okay. Let's do something a bit more fancy. So I've got a real basic bit of SQL that's just tidying up uh, the data. Essentially, I'm making it into a dimension. I'm saying, well, dim product and just save as table. Now, again, this is... A little bit weird getting used to actually save a table not being the, the devil. Um, so this is going to write it to the default location for that catalog. It's going to write it to the default location for that meta store, which means it's going to be stored in whatever lake I've told Unity Catalog to use as its primary lake. So it's not writing it to DBFS. It's not going to be stored in the local storage account inside my database workspace. It's going into an ADLS Gen 2 lake that I've defined at my Unity Catalog level. Um, and it still makes it a managed table. So it still means if I drop this table, then all the data goes with it, which I still don't really like doing. But even so, a quick example, go and make me a little uh, dim product. Okay, I didn't run the previous thing. I need to actually create that uh, database, the schema, so I can insert into it. That's fine. So I'm going to run that. And then that's real simple little query, right? Go and join these two things together, rename a few things, and then give me something that looks a bit more like a dimension. Sure. I mean, I could surrogate key, I could identity, I could do all that kind of stuff. Doing the same thing over here. So I want to join two tables together. I want to kind of just then write it down and call that a fact. Okay. You know, the most basic warehouse known to man, but still. So I've now got this new schema. We can go into our original tables. I say, well, what thing? I know I used product. So product got drawn into something. So if I click into lineage, I've got no upstream dependencies. But look at downstream. I now see I've got a downstream dependency. So there is a Unity catalog table that was made based on this table. So I've got this idea of lineage. I can go and see that lineage graph going, okay. So me, the sales LT raw product goes into just one table. It's one table that uses this currently. All right, makes, makes sense. And again, I've got my normal notebook view. If I switch onto the other side, I go and have a look at my, my destination, my data warehouse tables, click into fact sales, for example. And then on my upstream, I see there's two tables that fed in to create me. 
and then there's nothing that currently relies on me. Again, the kind of things that you'd expect to see. All makes sense. It just captured automatically. As soon as I've turned on that config at the cluster level, then I actually get things captured. And there's the final little uh, test. I'm just going to do this one. So I'm just going to run just a little aggregation summary thing saying select from fact sales in a join to my product, group it. So this is going from those two aggregate tables. So I'm going to have a couple more steps of lineage. Uh, that's just a select to show you it. So let's go and do that as an actual table. So create a replace table, creating a new table on the fly using this kind of CTAS uh, statement. Okay, that's gone off. It's, uh, it's created that table. So I should now be able to go back to my data, have a look inside AdventureWorks, have a look inside of DW. I've now got that product sales, that kind of third step, that aggregation table. I'm going to lineage and I see it's coming from those two tables. So inside my lineage graph, I could see that first level. Like, well, okay, what's, what's that based on? And you can kind of click down. So it's it'd be nice if there was a button to press just to say, show me all of the dependencies, show me everything within this catalog, within this schema, and just get this big map of how everything works. But certainly at the individual level, if I'm having a look at an individual object and saying, right, what, what goes, depends on your, what goes back, what goes back, and being able to see how it fits as it fits into all that whole process. Uh, being able to click on one of these things and go, okay, show me my lineage graph. And I can see that going out. I can slowly add that out. Essentially, you can just explore other parts of that dependency graph. So, yeah, it's as simple as that, really. There isn't really anything else to, to do. It's as long as your queries are accessing tables and writing to tables. And I know that's going to be a big shift to a lot of people. Loads of ETL frameworks, lots of the ones I've built, are based on the lake. They're very much telling you where to put data in the given lake. And it's going to be a slight mind shift to say, well, okay, uh, let's do everything at the table level because now we get added benefits. If we do things at the table level, we can get lineage. We can have that data automatically tracked. We can have that, I, I hope, then part of the information scheme. Maybe, maybe, no. Mm -hmm. One thing I'd want to see then, if we can't actually query it, because how useful would that be? Being able to click that button, say track all my lineage, and then be able to run a query to suck all that lineage out. And then, you know, if you wanted to build integrations to other governance tools, you've then got all that data to push there. Maybe it isn't here, and I just don't know which of these tables it is. I don't know. But uh, yeah, no, really, really interesting, useful stuff that you can turn on just with that one click of a button. And then as long as you're working in the way it expects you to work, then we're good. As long as you're happy that you won't get lineage about which file it came from. So this won't tell me that all of those, my source tables, my raw product, my raw customer, etc., they came from a landing blob. I could have used autoloader to suck it in. I could have been sucking from an API. I've got loads of different sources, and I'm not going to see that in my lineage view. So this is just telling me internal to my lake, what steps things went through, all the dependencies, everything we can do. Now that is in its own, we, even with limitations, incredibly useful. If I'm thinking about changing the schema of one of my like first tables, I'm like, well, that's not going to affect anything. And then I can do downstream dependencies. I can see what's going to break if I change something. Uh, if I'm arguing with someone going, no, no, there's other people that use that table. People going, no, no, this is just for me. I built it as a prototype. And then you turn lineage on, you look at it and you're like, oh, yeah, no, people are putting it into a dashboard because you can if you're on the Databricks SQL side or people are building it into their own tables. Oh, actually, this tiny little prototype POC table is the one thing holding up a giant gargantuan monolith of data analytics. Anyone been in that scenario before? Yeah. So, really nice little feature. Now turned on. Now in public preview. Again, because it's public preview, there might be one or two things that flux and change uh, until it goes GA. But everyone can now try it out if you've got Unity Catalog set up. Just turn it on. Turn it on in your clusters. Turn it on in your Databricks SQL clusters. Turn it on in your engineering clusters. Have a think about switching your uh, various different bits of logic to use the Unity Catalog table references. And then, yeah, have a play with the lineage and see what you get. That is all I want to go through today. But we'll be back next week with more stuff. It is a crazy week. So we'll be on a slightly reduced time schedule thing for the next uh, week or two. And then we'll be back in full force. Don't forget, Big Data London is coming up in just a week. So we'll be there. Come and say hello. And yeah, I'll catch you next time. Cheers.